everyone. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's workshop. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be discussing this delicious death. Um, this one's by Kayla Cottingham. So this is the second book by Kayla Cottingham that I've read. All right. So if you, <coughs> pardon me, if you watched my or listened to my previous review um, of My Dearest Darkest, you know that I was not wholly impressed with her debut novel. Um, I had a lot of, I had a hard time connecting to her characterizations and to her characters and just the story itself didn't feel cohesive. Um, it felt like there was a story, but it just didn't flow perfectly. This one, complete opposite. Maybe it's just my love of the whole zombie trope, but I really, really did enjoy this novel way more than her previous novel. So The Suspicious Death, it follows four girls. They've been affected with something called the Halloween. It's a zombie apocalypse. There was a pathogen um, locked in the ice caps. Global warning, ice caps melted, went in the air, infected people. Some people died. Some people turned into zombies. Kind of, sort of. So they're still aging. They're still, they can still function as normal citizens. However, they have cravings for human flesh. They are zombies, <laughs> but they're called, you know, people, some people call them ghouls. Some people call, call them the hollowed. So society is going on as it normally does. That's, I think that's one of the things I really liked about the story is how it kind of has taken this zombie trope, but it has really developed it in a really cool way. So society is still moving on. They found a way to deal with it. Companies made it thin flesh. So synthetic human flesh for them to eat. It's just like, as long as, you know, as long as the hollowed eat it regularly, they're fine. They can continue living their lives as normal citizens, you know? And then you have these four girls and then they are um, afflicted with it. They decide to go to the desert to a music festival. Um, just think like kind of Burning Man or Coachella, right? Something along those lines. And they discover one of their friends is starting to go feral. Now they don't know why. So this is, you know, lots of queer representation as well, just like in her previous book, just so that you are aware, you know, you do have a trans character, you do have a um, LGBTQ representation. I can't remember if she's bi or if she is um, lesbian. I can't remember, so I don't really want to say which one, because I, I, I want to say it's a sapphic love story, but I can't for like, like, I didn't write that down in my notes because it just seemed inconsequential to me because it's just the story. It's a really good story with really good characters. But these four girls, they go to the desert, they're going to party before they go off to college and live their lives. But one of their friends, Val, goes feral. And now people start going missing. And now they're just seeing even more feral um, ghouls, so to speak. And these friends are just like, well, one, we have to find our friend. And two, what the heck is going on? So they find themselves enmeshed in like this kind of mystery while they're also trying to survive themselves. This music festival that, you know, shit's just starting to hit the fan in this festival. But it's really, really good. And, you know, it's very fast paced. It flowed. That's key here for this story because, again, that was my issue with her previous novel. It didn't flow perfectly well. It felt disjointed. This one didn't. It flowed very well. And this that's very important as well because the story is not 100% linear. You're getting to know our two main characters through flashbacks as well. So you're seeing how they became hollowed and their friendship and how close they are with one another. You're seeing who they are, who they were before briefly, and how the, the zombie apocalypse affected them individually. And then you're going to present day and you're seeing the formation, you know, the depth of their character dynamics. And I liked that. And that's another reason why it flowed because you're seeing 
And that's probably a better reason why I was able to connect to these characters um, way more than in the previous novel, because you're seeing that connection between these characters. You know, those character dynamics are really fleshed out. They are emotive. They are relatable. You can connect to these characters. I struggled with My Dearest Darkness. I really, really, My Dearest Darkness, I struggled with connecting to the characters in that book. It, it was a struggle for me. I was just like, eh, with that book. This one, absolutely loved it. You know, fast pace, excellent pacing. I, I cannot stress that enough, especially when you're going back and forth between a memory and present day. That's very, very crucial that you don't ruin that momentum and you don't ruin that pacing because those memories, you know, like I said, it adds to the characterization, it adds to the character dynamics, it adds to the character growth, and it even adds more tension to that momentum, you know, it adds more momentum to the tension, I should say, rather. <laughs> but it was so well done that, you know, I just have to say, read this. If you love zombies, definitely pick up this book. If you like sapphic romances, definitely pick up this book. If you like stories about, you know, female friendships, definitely pick up this book. It was a lot of fun to read. And that ending, I was just like, good for you, girl. <laughs> Especially when they figure out who the bad guy is and I'm just like you're a prick and you deserve everything you you get and then I'm just like you go girls be better than him <laughs> because someone's trying to cause mass panic someone doesn't like ghouls and wants all the ghouls locked up so their goal is to infect ghouls by making them feral so that they're all locked up and that's the, the mystery that the girls have to solve like what is happening like this isn't normal and I love that I love this little mystery I love the zombie trope I love the female friendships it was a really really good book honestly um highly recommend it so I'm gonna go ahead and give it um I'm gonna give it four stars I'm gonna go ahead and give it four stars I, I think initially I gave it like three and a half I'm like you know what after sitting on it for a while it was good like, I really did enjoy it, and I really do highly recommend it, especially because I love zombie I love zombie books. I really do. I've got one sitting in here to write myself, still kind of formulating everything, but I want to write a zombie book. I wrote a vampire one. Let's go ahead and write a zombie one now. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I do recommend this book. I will, of course, include links in the description on where you can purchase the book if you so desire. Yeah, it gets a solid four. Um, in any case, thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your book loving friends. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.